Um, okay, so we're looking out this field here, and we notice we got yellowing of the plants, and we're thinking dry weather, manganese deficiency, and what else are we thinking about? Well, and that's what caught my attention. We drove by. I said it looked like a, just driving by some manganese deficiency, and the examination of the leaf uh, tissue. Yes, it does look like some manganese deficiency out here, which means it could be indicative of a little bit of high pH. But upon walking in the field, it's real easy to find three-cornered alfalfa hopper damage. And right here at the tip of my knife, you can see that girdle, which is where the uh, insect, the three-cornered alfalfa hopper, girdled around. All these pit marks is where she laid her eggs. And once she girdles around this stem, which looks like the main stem, you can see she lays her eggs. This part's swollen compared to this part below and there will be no more nutrient flow from the leaf tissue down to the rest of the plant. We found a lot of damage. There's a place right there. So there's a lot of place in this field that right. has some damage. Absolutely. And another thing it'll do is once you have any kind of damage to the stem, what you'll have is uh, an open avenue for some of the soil pathogens. So particularly some of these lateral branches that are laying on the soil surface. Maybe not so much this one right here, but some of these that are right on the soil line, then all of a sudden you got an avenue for some of these pathogens that cause uh, white mold or rhizoctonia to move in. So a fair amount of damage. There's in, feeding right here. There's another feeding. There's right. feeding right there. Absolutely. So they've been real active in this field. This is certainly enough to warrant treatment. We've got to knock them down. We walked the field earlier today. We kicked up some three-cornered alfalfa hoppers that anybody ever stepped, but we could find very little damage in that field out of that ride. This field right here, you've got to get them under control because they'll keep feeding, keep causing more damage. It's very difficult to determine how much yield loss you could uh, suffer uh, without having an untreated check beside it, but there's enough damage here you are having some yield reduction. So need to get on top of this pretty quick. Yeah, so we can use a pyrethroid and that'll help knock them down. And But we still want to stay on top of our fungicide sprays, our soreborn fungicide sprays even though it's dry. That's right and it's an excellent point RJ because what you got is a dry condition. The organisms are still in the soil. There's a little bit of moisture in the soil and once you uh, the organisms will start feeding on the below ground portion and that's what we end up with underground white mold. It's still the same organism Sclerotium rossii but it's attacking the root system, the peg stems, the pods. That's what they're feeding on because there's a little bit of moisture there and you don't see the, the typical evidence of what we call white mold with all the white fluffy growth down here in the crown of the plant. So that's why it's important, even in the dry conditions, to stay on top of your fungicide spray program to protect against white mold, and especially when you have damage from insects like this, you've got to protect that plant as much or more because the, the, the insects are opening up avenues and areas on the plant for the organisms to feed more quickly and cause quicker deterioration. All righty.